This program is made possible by the partners and friends of Bob Yandian Ministries. Coming up on this episode of Student of the Word. God would rather that you become, as you grow up, the main emphasis, not on your prosperity, not on your healing, not on your family. The main emphasis in growing up is I can win more people to the Lord Jesus Christ. I can now answer more questions than I ever had before. And some skeptic can't knock me off this foundation I have, the rock solidness of the Lord Jesus Christ. For more than 40 years, Bob Yandian has been an expositor of the Bible, making seemingly complicated doctrine easy to understand. Grab your Bible and something to take notes with and study the Word of God with Pastor Bob Yandian. Hello and welcome again to Student of the Word with Pastor Bob Yandian. You know, when Jesus left, he left us the Great Commission. The Great Commission used to belong to Israel, now it's been given to the church. In fact, some of the scriptures we're used today about witnessing was taken from the Old Testament because their job was to take the gospel to the world and the Great Commission was given to them. But when the church started, Jesus took the Great Commission from Israel, gave it to the church, and one day it's gonna go back to Israel again when the church is removed. And in the meantime, God has called us and always has called us as believers to win other people to the Lord Jesus Christ and has made the gospel simple. And so today we're gonna be starting with Matthew chapter five. I wanna read verses one through 12. This is the Beatitudes that Jesus gave. We're gonna pull one of them out. And it says, beginning in verse one, seeing the crowds, he went up into a mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and being taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecute the prophets who were before you. Jesus has been ministering in his homeland, and he's been ministering, but the crowds are getting so great that he has to go train a group of people. So this was really said to the disciples. Notice in verse one again, it said that he sat and taught his disciples. Later on, the multitudes will find him because this particular Sermon on the Mount covers three chapters, five, six, and seven of Matthew. And halfway through chapter seven, the crowds find Jesus, and he switches over in the middle of chapter seven to a simple salvation message. But today we're going to talk about being a peacemaker. And that's one of the last things Jesus mentioned here in this passage of scripture. Verse nine, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the sons of God. Then he talks about being persecuted for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because being a peacemaker does open you up for persecution. Why is it? Because it says, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. Becoming a peacemaker is what lets the world know that you are a Christian. In essence, we're coming back to it. A peacemaker is a witness. It's interesting to note that the peacemaker is not mentioned further back. In other words, it's not mentioned in some of the opening ones. In fact, it's one of the last ones mentioned. And before that, we come to the fact that we have been called into this earth and he's called us to be born again. And uh, we're going to hunger and thirst after righteousness. That's spiritual growth. And uh, we're to be merciful and God will give us mercy. So we learn how to be operators of love in this earth and benefit to others. And then it says that then in verse nine, then blessed are the peacemakers. The reason why being a witness is stuck put close to the end is because the best witnesses are mature believers, those who have grown in the Lord. Now, it doesn't mean that a brand new convert can win, cannot win people to the Lord because we find that in the word of God. Uh, we find the fact that the woman at the well, when she met Jesus, ran right back into town and brought all these people out and they got saved. And so we find also the case where Andrew was saved and right off, he ran right back home and brought his uh, brother Peter to the Lord. So it's not wrong to, to witness when you're young in the Lord. In fact, it's very admirable to do so. But the thing about a peacemaker is, is that he's called a peacemaker here, since he'll be called the, the sons of God, the children of God, it's the fact that one, a person who's more mature and they can answer more questions. They're more stable. They can't be knocked off of their belief system. They're not, they're knocked off their foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ because they have something to fight back with. And oftentimes young believers get sidetracked by the world around him. They try to, they walk, they try to walk into a situation and they try to answer questions, but they're in no position to answer questions. They're a brand new child in the Lord. In essence, it comes back to this. Even in the natural, babies don't produce babies. Adults produce babies. 
But in the kingdom of God, anyone can witness and God wants us to. Our life is surrounded by being a witness also. Let me tell you what's attached to being a witness, the peacemaker. It's also operating in signs and wonders. When Jesus sent us into all the world, what he told us was go into all the world, preach the gospel. Whoever believes shall be saved. Whoever does not believe shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they'll cast out devils, speak with new tongues, And uh, he brought all these, he says, and cleansed the leper. These are things that we are called to do as believers because it's part of our witnessing toward the Lord. And of course, God wants us to all grow up and God wants us to become mature believers. In fact, he said in John chapter eight, after he led many people to the Lord, while he was speaking, it said many Jews believed on him. And he said to those Jews who just believed in him, now, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you'll know the truth, the truth will make you free. The number one thing a brand new convert needs to do is sit down and grow up in the word of God. It's all right to witness, but again, what's gonna happen is the more mature you get in the word of God, the more stable you are, and the more that you can answer the questions of the world, especially religious questions. But again, God wants us to become a witness. And so here he's talking about the best witnesses, again, are mature believers. That's what my ministry is established for. My ministry is to help establish people for ministers to become more stable ministers. It's what the number one calling on my ministry is to help people that are, are in the ministry and help them become more stable and to help raise up a new generation of stable ministers who are stable in two areas, the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Everything else in the ministry changes, but those two things always remain the same. And of course, at the same time, I'm called to take believers and call and bring them into maturity. And so why? Because in essence, we're all part of the minister, but especially what God's called me to is to help raise up a new generation of ministers especially pastors and teachers, evangelists, others like that, to grow more mature in the things of God. We have a day today where people are moving away from the power of the Holy Spirit and away from teaching the Word of God. More storytelling than ever before or a thought. And we, they wrap it around a scripture, but they just kind of preach on a thought rather than opening it up verse by verse and enlightening people by the power of the Word of God. This is what God has called us to do. And so again, this is what my ministry is. And so I'd like you to join me in this ministry. If you too are sensing some of the same things I am, we see around us a lack of enthusiasm toward the word of God and especially a lack of enthusiasm toward the Holy Spirit. And these two things are what makes us incredibly stable in the things of God. Guidance comes, number one, the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you into all truth. That's the word of God. And then we'll show you things to come. Guidance is very much attached to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and especially praying in other tongues. He that prays in an unknown tongue edifies himself. That means you build yourself up and make yourself sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And so I'd like you to join me in that and become a partner with me. Go to my website, bobyandian.com, and there you can find out how you can become a partner with me. I'd love to have you join me and the team, uh, those of us helping to help get the word of God out there and bring some maturity into the things of God in the kingdom of God. Verse of scripture, I always when I sign a book, Isaiah 33, six, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times and the strength of your salvation. Wisdom and knowledge of the word of God makes you a stable Christian and then convinces you strongly that you are born again. No one can convince you you're not born again and no one can knock you off that stable foundation that you're standing on the word of God. That's what my ministry is called to do. So when it comes again to a peacemaker, verse nine, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the sons of God. Notice witnessing doesn't make you a child of God. The new birth makes you a child of God. Witnessing lets it be known you are a child of God. And the way you witness is by three things. Number one, by giving your testimony, giving the invitation to the lost to get saved. Number two, by living the Christian life, because the Bible says whatever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're called to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the third thing that you are called to do is with signs and wonders, laying hands on the sick, seeing them recover. And again, I've quoted this before, but Kenneth Hagin, one of the things he said in the ministry was, he said that healing is the dinner bell for the gospel. Signs and wonders always bring people in because people always have need. And God will meet that need. They don't have to be saved first to get healed. Jesus healed multitudes. And because of that, it said many believed on him. So signs and wonders can be used as a means of bringing people to the gospel, bringing people into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. And those are the three things that our life should revolve around. Number one, the words of our mouth edify God. The actions that we live by glorify God. And we are willing at any time to pray with a person for their needs and see them met. 
There's a man that lives in my neighborhood, was walking one day out uh, outside, and so I saw him, and he was walking really, really slow. And I said, is there something wrong? He said, yeah, I had a stroke the other day. And he said, I went to see the doctor, and there, he named some things wrong with it. He says, and, and I said, do you believe in prayer? He said, well, yes. He said, I go, and he named the church he goes to. It was a denominational church. And he said, but I believe in prayer. I said, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you that this thing is over. And, I, and he said, okay. And so I grabbed his hand, and I prayed. And he said, thank you. I mean, he said, thank you. And he went back into his house. I didn't, I saw him on the streets later on. And when he, what he said was this, he said, I went back to the doctor. It's all gone. He said, it's all gone. And he told me months later, he says, I've never even had a symptom. He said, after that, I kept having symptoms, but even the symptoms are gone. I have had no effect from that. And he says, thank you for your prayers. Well, a number of months later, something else came up. He called, I called, oh, he walked over. Would you pray for me again? I mean, that's exactly what we went to. So I prayed for him again. The good news is, is this is what we're called to do. Now, he was already a Christian, but you know what? It can bring stability into his life, and it can cause him to go on into discipleship by following the things of God when he knows the power of the supernatural. So again, what is a peacemaker? A peacemaker is, is the message of reconciliation. In fact, the word for reconciliation means to make, to make peace between two warring parties. And so a peacemaker is one who brings peace into a person who feels like they're at war with God and God's at war with them. And it's simply the fact that the war was ended at the cross, but that peace that was brought by the cross, reconciliation can be brought into a person's life where now they become reconciled or at peace with God. When two people are fighting, we want to bring reconciliation. And whenever people come in for counseling to me and they're, and they're fighting in their marriage, what are they looking for? We want to be reconciled. We want reconciliation. And God wants reconciliation too, the eternal reconciliation of knowing him as Lord and Savior. So again, peacemakers bring the message of reconciliation. Those who witness for the Lord make converts. Peacemakers are almost last in the list of the Beatitudes. Why? Because witnessing is for the mature, mainly for the mature. Again, others can do it, but witnessing is mainly for the mature because you live it as well as talk about it. Those, again, who know some scripture and can answer the question of skeptics. And again, we brought it out here that adults have babies, not children. And uh, so children in the kingdom of God are different, though. They can win souls, and a brand new convert can win souls. But God would rather that you become, as you grow up, the main emphasis not on your prosperity, not on your healing, not on your family. The main emphasis in growing up is I can win more people to the Lord Jesus Christ. I can now answer more questions than I ever had before. And some skeptic can't not me off this foundation I have, the rock solidness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 through 21, you probably know it says this, if any man be in Christ, he's a brand new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new and all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word or the message of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us we pray you in Christ's place or Christ's absence be reconciled to God. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. When we get back from the break, we'll talk about this more. But in the meantime, I have a particular series called Winning Your World. And in the word of God, people like Andrew want his brother to the Lord, Peter. And this is the first place we start winning is our world around us. And that expands into the city, neighborhoods, other that we, that we live in. And this is God's plan for you. So the announcer is going to come on and tell you how you can have a copy of Winning Your World. As believers, we are on this earth at this place and time for a purpose. To go into all the world and preach the gospel. Would you like to find out what the Bible has to say about witnessing and how to witness by the power of the Holy Spirit? Then order your copy of Bobby Endian's teaching series titled Winning Your World. Winning Your World is available as a six CD series for $25 or as an MP3 download for $15. To order, visit bobbyandian.com or call 918 918- Two five zero two two zero seven. Bob Yandian Ministries is training up a new generation in the Word of God. Because of your generosity and faithfulness, this teaching ministry is able to change countless lives. You will never know until you get to heaven how many people received Jesus, were filled with the Holy Spirit, healed, 
or found God's will for their life through your support and prayers. If you would like to schedule Bob Yandian to speak at your church, event, or conference, go to bobyandian.com forward slash invite or call 918-250-2207. All right, welcome back. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. I want to read verses 12 through 17. While you're finding that, again, I want you to notice what Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. A peacemaker is someone who witnesses. It's just a nice big term for witnessing because the purpose of witnessing is to bring peace into a person's life. Do you ever notice this in the Word of God that almost the main message throughout the Word of God is peace? When Jesus Christ was born, what's the first message that the angels in heaven sang? Peace on earth and goodwill to men. And when Jesus came to this earth, what was his message? His message was peace. That's again what reconciliation is. And we again are called peacemakers. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord talks about also in the word of God, how our peace can be multiplied unto us. What the world is looking for is peace. And what they think they're looking for is external peace. What they have is, they think if there's external peace, they'll have internal peace. What Jesus gives to you is a peace on in the inside of you that is always there despite what's going on on the outside. Outside peace will not bring inward peace, but inward peace will make you at peace no matter what's going on around you. In other words, you can be in the midst of all hell breaking loose and have peace on the inside. If you don't have peace on the inside, it can be peaceful on the outside, but you're just roaring on the inside. Man, you are just at, at, at odds with everything and nothing seems to sell you and bring you peace. The peace that Jesus brings today to an individual is internal peace, peace in their heart that passes all under understanding. The eventual peace on the earth will be when Jesus Christ comes back and all wars will stop and there'll be no more fighting on this earth. But until that day, what God brings is is eternal, but internal peace also at the same time. Reconciliation, again, is the name for a peacemaker and reconciliation is the bringing of peace between two warring parties. Peace is our message and it is the result of accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Look with me again in Ephesians chapter two. We're gonna read verses 12 through 17. At that time, this is before you were born again, you were without Christ and aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in this world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who are at one time far off are brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who has made both one, that's Jews and Gentiles, and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that's the division, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of two one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both to God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity by it, and came and preached peace to you who are afar off and those of you who are near. The ones that were afar off were Gentiles. The one who was near is Jews, but even being near didn't mean they were saved. They were close to the covenants, close to the word, close to the voice of God, but still missed the whole point. As a nation, many within Israel were saved. Of course, we have the prophets listed throughout the Old Testament and many believers and books named after believers in the Old Testament and the list of believers appear in Hebrews chapter 11. But there's so many, many, many other believers in the word of God, in the nation of Israel. But as a whole, the nation, by the time it came to Jesus, rejected him. And he was what the Old Testament prophesied would come. He would be the Prince of Peace. And so Jesus Christ again came, but now the people as a whole rejected him. And of course, that was for those that were afar off and those that were near. And now he says, those that were afar off, Gentiles, so far away from the promises of God, so far away from the covenants of God, not part of the commonwealth of Israel, have now been brought in and made and brought in by the blood of Jesus Christ. Where there's today, there is no junior Gentile as far as God is concerned. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we need to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Faith in God is the only place where we can have true peace in life. Inside of Christ is true peace because that's the place where man is at peace with God. The point of it is, We often think if we can just be at peace with everybody around us, then we'll have peace with God. You see what happened with Adam and Eve is 
when they sinned, their first thought was to try to be at peace with each other. If we're at peace with each other, we can be at peace with God. And man has thought that way ever since. If we can all get together and have peace, we'll be okay with God. God says, no, it starts with, if you have peace with me, then you can have peace with other people around you. It always starts with God and his offer to us. And even if I can't be at peace with you, you will not join me in this peace. I can have personal peace between me and God. I can walk in the midst of a world that hates me, despises me, comes against me, but I can have peace on the inside. Why? Because eternally settled in me is my eternal life. Eternally settled within me is the forgiveness of sins. In, eternally set inside of me is I am now at peace with God, joined with him, a child of God, no longer in Satan's kingdom, and I am now born again. So again, this is what happens. So Faith in God is the only place we can have true uh, peace with God. Peace cannot be uh, asked for. It cannot be prayed for. It's a result of doing something right. Romans chapter five and verse one says this, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with our Lord Jesus Christ. By doing things right, in the, as far as God is concerned and the word is concerned, brings peace into our life. We're told later on in the word of God, the things that bring peace. And that is that we can, uh, in this life, uh, we can walk in the things of God, rejoice in the things of God. Uh, we can have forgiveness toward other people. And then the resulting thing is we will have peace. And so peace is multiplied unto us by the knowledge of God. The more the word we have, the more peace we have. But again, peace is not something we can pray for. To pray for peace is wrong. And as, if you're doing it, listen, no kind condemnation attached to you, but simply start doing the things according to the word of God and peace will be a result. There's nowhere in the word of God that says to pray for peace, but peace is always a result. First of all, by accepting Jesus, being justified by faith, we have peace with our Lord Jesus Christ. So peace cannot be prayed for, asked for, but it's a result of doing something right. Again, faith in Jesus Christ brings it first, but then living by scriptural obedience after that, again, is given to us. Peace can be passed on to others through making converts. This is what we're talking about, becoming a peacemaker, but also then making disciples out of converts. That peace is multiplied on the inside of them. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace that we got at salvation can be added to, increases, it grows, it multiplies each day as we follow after the things of God. Romans 5, 1 is the beginning place. Again, with all the things announced by peace that Jesus Christ was going to bring, then the next thing that happens is, of course, is we have that peace and we get it by accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The first peacemaker was Jesus. And now he is gone. He brought reconciliation, preached the message of reconciliation. And when he left, he handed that ministry of reconciliation, making peace on the earth. He gave that to us. And now we are called ministers of reconciliation with the word, the message of reconciliation. Ephesians chapter six and verse 15 says, our feet are covered with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Even the gospel is called the gospel of peace. And this is what our feet are covered with. Notice what part of our body the gospel covers. It's our feet, because why? Jesus said, go. The first commandment he gave to us, go into all the world, preach the gospel. Our feet carry the gospel. And that's why God says your feet are beautiful. Most people will admit they don't like their feet. Most people will say, you know, I pull my socks and shoes off and Ugh, I just don't like my feet. And I've seen even very handsome men and very beautiful women. You look at it and think, my, look at that guy. Gee, he just looks like, a, you know, he's chiseled and, and everything into a, like a statue. He's just so perfect and she's so beautiful. But they'll often tell you, we don't like our feet. They're too big. Uh, they're, they're too bony. You know, they'll name a number of things wrong with them. And of course, the feet never are very beautiful to us. But you know what God says? Your feet are beautiful. You know why? Because they carry the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's why he said that our feet in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 15 are covered with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I am a peacemaker. But you know what? This was also brought out in the Old Testament, Isaiah 52 and verse 7. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good tidings. You know what good tidings is? Good news. You know what the good news is? The gospel. In fact, translations also say this, even in Isaiah, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of them who bring the gospel, who publishes peace, who brings good tidings and publishes salvation, 
who says to Zion, your God reigns. This is the same thing given to Israel in the Old Testament, and they were to take the gospel to the world. Uh, and they did. I mean, in many, many cases, they did. You take of what happened uh, when Jonah took the gospel to Nineveh. He didn't preach the law to them. See, they were never to take the law to the world. The law taught the message of salvation. The law taught how to witness to people. The law was divided into two sections. The first part simply teaches the law, teaches you you're a sinner and need a savior because you can't keep the law. The next part of the law is the sacrifice which tell you the answer for the first part. This part shows you you're separated from God. You can't please God. This side shows you how to, and that's by coming through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that taught them the gospel. All they had to do was take what the law taught, which is the simplicity of salvation. And of course, that's exactly what happened when Jonah went to Nineveh. He didn't walk down the street saying, you know, quit eating shellfish and, and stop uh, eating shrimp and and no more catfish and, and eating pork. He didn't say that, nor did he say men be circumcised and start obeying the law and be sure you bring your tithes to the storehouse. He didn't preach that. That is admonition from the law, but again, that's not the means of salvation. What was the one word he preached in Nineveh? Repent. And for the people from the king down to the people in the streets repented. And so this has been the message of the Old Testament. By the time that Jesus came, they were no longer teaching the gospel or preaching the gospel to the world. They were taking Judaism to the world. They were taking the law to the world. And this is what made Jesus so upset. And when he chewed out the, uh, the Pharisees in chapter 23 of Matthew, he said, you go, you cover land and sea. That's good. That's their feet going. He said, you should be going, but you compass land and sea to make one proselyte not a convert, not a Christian. You don't go out as a peacemaker. You go to make Jews out of Gentiles. He said, you make them twofold more the child of hell than you are yourself. By the time Jesus came, they were taking the law to the world. And this is not what God wanted. So Jesus took that message of reconciliation and gave it to the church. Now our feet are lovely on the mountains, bringing the glad tidings of peace to the world. And so again, a peacemaker realizes that peace has already been secured by God and that God is at peace with man. Now, what we preach is man needs to be at peace with God. You be reconciled to God. And so God has done his part through the cross, does not hold man's sins and trespasses against him. We should not hold man's sins and trespasses against him. We can come and preach to a person and give them the gospel. They might say, yeah, but I was a, you know, I was a pimp. That, this, that's not the issue. Jesus died for that. But I was a prostitute. Jesus died for that. And I was a drug addict. Jesus died for that. The point of it is, and comes back to this is Jesus died for those things to reconcile you to God. And all you have to do is now be reconciled. All you have to do is receive Jesus as your savior. That is the message of what we preach. Peace with God can now bring peace between people. And now that I've accepted Jesus as my Lord and savior, this is where true racial peace can come. This is where true re uh, reconciliation can come between men and women, young and old, between rich and poor. All the different divisions we have in this earth can now be settled by coming to Jesus Christ. Christ, because in Jesus Christ, there is no Jew, no Gentile. There is no bond nor free. All this has been given to us. I want you again to realize that I have, a, I have an offer here. It's called Winning Your World. And again, the simplicity of salvation, the simplicity of witnessing to other people, the simplicity of being a witness and being that peacemaker the world is looking for. This can change your life. And again, your simple approach to preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will see you tomorrow. Have a good day. If you would like to become a partner with Bob Yandian, visit our website at bobyandian.com and click on Partnership or call us at 918-250-2207. You can order resources, become a partner, or browse free articles and podcasts by visiting our website at bobyandian.com. You can also join our mailing list and receive weekly devotions and the latest ministry updates. If you would like to contact Bob Yandian Ministries, visit bobyandian.com and click on Contact or call us at 918-250-2207. To contact us by mail, use the address on your screen. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We'll see you next time on Student of the Word with Bob Yandian.